the single greatest skill that a classic car guy can pick up is welding. I mean, it has to be. It means you can repair, fabricate, modify, but more fundamentally, it changes how you view a prospect project. You can look at a car when you have welding skills and have a far greater appetite for that car or buy a worse car, a car that might be now in your budget because you're not scared of cutting out some metal and putting in some new stuff. And that, if you ask me, is a huge thing. If you've been watching this series, you know that I started my own project out of sheer necessity with this. It's a 99 euro flux cord gasless MIG welder that came from a supermarket. And I want to say really bad things about it because I've created some of the worst welds you'll ever see with this machine. But the fact remains, I went from being completely green to finishing my first restoration and that car passed roadworthiness scrutiny. So what can I say about this machine? It doesn't make pretty welds, but it makes welds that are passable. And that's a big deal. I swore I wouldn't get a better machine or even try and get a better machine before I had some sort of knowledge of what makes a good machine. And in the interim, a friend of the series, a patron called Aaron Judd stepped in and started the GoFundMe campaign and he created a budget for a decent welder. And I ran with that budget. I have made a friend and ally in a great company in the UK called Artec Welders. They allowed me to keep the budget so that I could go to them and make a series of videos on the three machines that they have given me to take home. I got a MIG, a TIG, and a plasma cutter. They gave me a demo. I did it with a guy called Mike from the company. I was like a kid in a sweet shop. I hope that comes across and I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Okay, this is Mike Gadsby from Artec Welding. And Mike, you're gonna give us a run through on uh, MIG, basic MIG yep. welding. Yep, absolutely. Set, set up and technique, I suppose. Okay, yep, yep. Could it be um, any hotter in here? <laughs> it's really hot today, it's not ideal. <laughs> For, for welding. Um, we should be on a beach somewhere with a cool breeze, but uh, there you go. We've got a machine here. Uh, we can do a demonstration now. And this is the machine that, uh, like, is it the actual one or it's the model I'm that, that I'm going to take home? Correct. With. So this yeah. is our MiG-180. It's our ever popular MiG-180. It's the most units we sell. Um, very affordable, very powerful machine for its size. Easy to use uh, as a great bit of kit. I've got one myself. I love using it and it's really, really good. Yeah, you would be really impressed with it. So, and is that, that's the, that's the lowest amp per amp model, right? But why would you, why do you favor that over, let's say, there is another one up the chain? There's, there's it's bigger brother, the 250, but that would go up to 250 amps. Uh, this would go 25 amps up to 180 amps with the right power. Um, it, it, it's the smaller one, it's the one that, that people would like to use in their, in their workshop, their home. So we tend to, uh, appeal to a larger market because more people are going to be it suits buying. yeah whereas if you're into sort of uh, smaller fabrications you might want the 250 amp machine more of a professional machine is a bit bigger takes a bigger spool of wire okay so th this takes the kind of 750 gram the five kilogram oh it takes five a five yeah you call that the small <laughs> real yeah, yeah. i call that the big oh, real. right okay yeah <laughs> so it, it is it is a portable you can pick it up one hand so you've got the one handle on it We've got the trolley option on this. With that, you can put a, uh, a bottle of gas on the back as well, so you can push that around in, within your workshop. Mm. Uh, some people put it in the back, if you're welding in the back of a van or something, you can put it in the back of a van and you can do it in there. It's that light and then it, it's, uh, it's a very portable unit. Okay, cool. So listen, I'm itching to see it working, yeah. so let's do safety gear. Okay, great, sir. We're well, gonna to talk to me about the wire feed first, right? right. Yep. Yep. And it's just, I can do this, right? Yeah, you I can. can. Yeah, you just pull it up. Open that. There you go. Big uh, spool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is, you can get smaller spools. You, you can put them on here as well. So if you're, say, welding stainless steel, you might not want to spend a lot of money on, on a five kilogram spool of stainless. So you might want to get a smaller one or if you don't have much welding to. So you've got the facility of, of both types of wire. This is the largest one this to take. It also makes it very portable. You can pick it up. Um, it's got a metal wire feed roller mechanism here. Uh, that means it's very reliable. Some of the plastic ones, some other manufacturers make plastic ones down to cost. It, they're not strong. Uh, you don't get the, the, the decent wire delivery that you will get with this one. Have a guess what kind of mine has. Uh, <laughs> mm, marzipan. <laughs> yeah. but what, so what, what happens what is, when it's plastic? It, it, what, it, it deforms, move. it moves. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't get the correct pressure on the wire to be delivering because 
An important thing with a MIG welder, you need an accurate, accurate wire delivery. If you don't have that, you're not going to get a good weld. You're not going to get a good arc. When you say accurate, are you talking about the speed or the, the speed, strength? Or? The, the, the reliability of it, and, and it's got to be constant. If you've got something that's not constant, your arc's going to drop in and out. Your weld's going to not perform as well as what you want. Um, so this way is very reliable. Uh, we find it very reliable, and all our customers do. Is there something about pushing wire through a welding pool to get deeper into the metal, is that a thing? Well, it, you generally, you do push the torch around about 70 degrees uh, for, for most applications. However, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on the fitness of the material. It's very thin, you're gonna get more penetration mm. and you might blow through or burn through, whatever you call it. Um, so you might wanna uh, pull on the, on the torch rather than push it. Uh, oh no, but I mean that you're driving the wire, let's say you've got a thicker, let's say you're working on three or four mil mm. plate or whatever, mm. and you've got a weld pool going. Mm. Is there some technique where you're, in some cases, driving, trying to drive the wire through that weld pool into the, to, melt, to, to get the metal melting deeper in? Well, Is that a thing? No? You, 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 <laughs> I you, might be making that up. Yeah, you can, you can weave it or you, you can um, do, do a, a, a bit of a pushing and push back and top of uh, uh, flow on that one. But I suggest if you're not getting a penetration, well, you need to turn your turn your amps up, turn your voltage up, so you get more, more power within it. Okay, that answers that question. <laughs> so yeah, go on. So the, so the, it's a metal feed. Yeah, metal feed um, has a facility to run a 0.6 or uh, 0.8 wire. Uh, you just turn the roller over, uh, and then you can run that type of wire. 0.8 will get you well in more, more of a range within this machine, where 0.6 will take you right down to 25 amps. Uh, some people prefer it on thin plate, um, but 0.8 will get you quite low, it'll probably get you around about 30 to 35 amps, um, so it is more flexible than 0.8. Why? Because then it can go up to a mil. It go up to yeah, you got 180 amps, so you can yeah. you can use the whole maximum size of the of the machine, the maximum voltage of it. Okay, but for car body panels, it's probably 0 0.6. 0 0.6, but you can do it at 0.8 as well. If you've got chassis work, I personally prefer to use 0.8. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's. Is there anything else in there? We we will move on to the front. Yeah. Well, it has just the option here. If you are doing gas list or uh, flux cord gas list wire, you will need to swap over your polarity on your your torch. So you need to run a negative torch, and and you can do that simply by undoing that screw and moving that power feed over to just switching and, and switching it over, and then obviously doing it on the front end on your earth return, so you have a positive yeah. earth. And so it's obviously designed to do all that. So Absolutely. Cool. Flexible. Yeah, very flexible. All right. Let me just, let's, let's have a look at the front. Okay. Right. Okay, so on the front then, mm. what, what's happening here? Okay, yeah, right. we've got a few switches and knobs to twiddle. So I'll just run through the basics of the front of the machine. Let's start with the, the MIG torch comes out of this. It's a Euro fitting. Uh, it's what's fitted to the majority of MIG welders throughout Europe. Uh, hence the euro. Um, it means you can change your torch um, if you if you break the torch or it needs replacing. You, you can simply unscrew that, pull it off, and put a new one on. So and anything that conforms to that European fitting is going to fit. Will fit if you buy a euro torch. Yes, that's correct. This this torch it's a MB15 type of torch. So all the consumables are readily available. You can go down, hopefully down your hobby shop and you might be able to buy the tips or, or the diffuser or the shrouds uh, that you should be able to get all the parts for. Alternatively, you can buy it from us uh, via our website. Why would I need a new diffuser? Do those things wear out? Well, they do after a while. They're subject to a lot of heat. Um, Sorry, so, so which is, that's the shield that, that, and that, then that's the diffuser, is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's the gas diffuser or tip holder. It's, it's called both because uh, it does both. Um, so your argon gas comes out from the holes inside there and then flows out over your tip and through your shroud, which fits on top. So your tips wear after a while. Uh, the hole becomes elliptical. Uh, you will need to replace your tip. And sometimes if you build up a lot of spatter inside the shroud, this becomes live and they start burning out. So all this is replaceable. Okay. It just simply pushes on. So it's a nice ergonomical torch to use. Uh, we've got a spool gun option. Now this is an option you can, if you're gonna MIG weld aluminium, um, we have this torch you can, you can buy, which uh, holds the aluminium wire up within the torch to, to, to enable it to feed very reliably. And that plugs into the front here and you simply switch it over onto spool gun and that will allow you to weld aluminium if you wanted to. 
Why is there a separate gun for aluminium welding? Well, aluminium being soft, uh, when you when you MIG welding, yeah, you, if you're trying to imagine you're pushing a very thin bit of aluminium wire up a, up a liner, a three meter liner, it's gonna snag and, and cause all manner of disruptions and not try and get out. With a spool line gun, it, it runs right on top of your handle. So it's only got six inches to, to run out so you get a smooth wire delivery. So it's really just to manage the feed better, it's to manage Absolutely. the wire. Absolutely, and, okay. and that's it. And you can buy very expensive machines with clutches on and everything else, but you're looking at thousands and thousands of pounds, and you know, that's what big companies to invest in. Um, but for, for a cheaper option, this is the better way to go. Is aluminium MIG welding, I mean, is it good? Is it a good way of doing it? it it's not the most reliable. You need to get old parameters set up very accurately to, to perform uh, aluminium welding, MIG welding. Um, it can be done, absolutely, but you, you don't have the control as you do with TIG. Mm. It won't weld that thin. Um, so you don't just don't have that control. But once you get all those parameters set up, it does weld it very can, well. It, it can, absolutely it can. Um, okay. Next to it, we've got the MMA function or manual metal arc or stick welding function. So it's if you're using the old electrodes with the flux over the top, the old, the old electric arc function. This has the facility to run that, uh, where you plug it in your, your dint sockets on the bottom. Uh, it is an optional extra on this machine. It is available to buy. And uh, that way, if you wanted to weld a garden gate down the bottom of your, your garden and uh, you, you can't take your gas down, that's ideal for it. Okay, so moving um, moving over onto the, the controls on the, under the bottom here, the knobs here. This one controls your amps for the stick function, that's why it's highlighted in white. So that's generally out of use? Yeah, generally out of use. When it's flicked over to that, that's when it's in use. Okay. Okay, so I'll put it back to Mega on it here. And on the bottom, these are the two functions that dial in for your MIG welding. So you have your voltage uh, with your wire speed and that dictates your amps. So it's a bit like some of the old, uh, older machines, the step voltage machines, where you clunk them around on different positions. These are linear, so you can get that sweet spot wherever you want to get when you're welding. Can I ask, uh, yeah, can I be a, a, a tough question? Yeah. What's, do they have a good lifespan? What's the, because I, I I know, I know from guitars that okay, you know, the, the, the pots can wear out. The pots yeah. can wear well, out, yeah. yeah we, we rarely find they do, but yeah, we got a three-year warranty for our machines. They rarely go within that three-year warranty. We do keep them on the shelf anyway. They're but, replaceable. So they are replaceable, absolutely, yeah. Um, so that, that's not a problem. So when you say the amps, by the way, that's, that's the power. That's yep. how hot, I suppose, you're yep. going to make the, the arc yeah. or the weld. It's controlled by the voltage, and the yeah. voltage and the wire speed together you get amps, you yeah. the amperage. So uh, this is maybe my basic understanding of it though, and it may be wrong, but the way I look at it is, you're really controlling the heat, and then as a, second, as a, as a secondary process to the heat, you need the wire to arrive quick enough to keep up with that Correct. heat. Correct, yeah, yeah. So what you're doing is, you're, you're, you're matching the heat to the thickness or the type of metal yep. you're using, and then you're just making sure the wire is able to. Yeah, it's balancing the two together, and sometimes you, you might need to just turn your wire up, or you might need to turn your voltage down, so mm. it, it's balancing those two together. We do have a guideline for this for different materials and thicknesses and okay. different positions. Like a chart? Or yes, a exactly, we do have that chart. So it gives you a sort of ballpark figure. And yeah. it, and, it and then you, you can just it. tweak it slightly exactly. if it's not. Yeah. Under here, uh, yeah. the LED display, and that's a live display, and that will only display what you're doing when you're welding. Um, that's for calibration purposes of the machine, and it's a good ballpark uh, to see what you're running at. But obviously you can't see that when you're welding because you'll be looking at your welding arc. So. Some people get a bit confused with that, but it is for calibration purposes. We know the machine will put out a certain amperage and it will display on So it's the, telling you how many amps it's putting out. When you're welding at a time, because that, that, that's all variable. So if you pull the torch back, your amps will drop down, and it's all to do with, with physics, really, on that. Righto. We're kind of at the point now where you could show me it working. Yeah, anyway. absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's, now we do the safety gear. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> What happened next was Mike asked me to just run a simple bead across a piece of 3mm plate and look at my face. I was shitting myself because this is where I thought 
you're going to be found out here. This is, you're going to show up the fact that you can't weld at all. And what actually happened was, I ran a bead across a piece of 3mm plate, and it was a perfectly passable bead. There is literally nothing to see here, except for the fact that the three years of gases welding had stood to me to a reasonable degree. So we moved on to things that I was hoping would be a little bit trickier. What's happened is we've got the extractor in and on, so things are just gonna be noisy anyway. I've already had an attempt at welding three mil plate. As you saw, it's kind of without drama. Turns out I can run a reasonable weld. So I wanted to get straight into a one mil to put butt weld, right? Butt weld, yeah. butt weld yeah. and see what happens there. And I'm hoping that something terribly fantastic happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'll just yep. go for it. Yeah, yeah, ready? I'll go from this end back. No, I have a natural tendency. Yeah, to, whatever you feel comfortable. Like that's to, that's, to that's fine. I, I prefer to push myself, so give it a go and push. Yeah, I went way off there. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Very good. There's a massive bow in it for starters, right? Yeah. There's a big bow in this. There's a lot of distortion essentially going on. But I mean, is that? Is there anything I could have done there to minimise that? The distortion. Yeah. Stagger your welds. Yeah. You you you're putting a lot of a lot of weld into a, a small plate, a very thin plate. Okay. So it's transferring a lot of heat to it, so it will bow. Uh, and that's the problem with welding panels, so that's what you've got to watch. Um, quite often staggering your welds, start and then over there, but in the middle, so like give it time to cool down. And, then a and weld, we've, yeah. we had it clamped down, we had it on a bit of a heat sink as well to take some of that heat away. Um, but effectively, it is staggering it, staggering your welds, really. It's going gonna, it's gonna to prevent that, but um, they, they do bow. So how did I do generally then in terms of... Well, you, it's, it's a very good... A little bit wiggly here, but it started off a little bit slow, sped up towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, you got very good penetration, and uh, possibly if you did drag the torch, you could also minimise some of the heat as well. But uh, yeah, effectively, that's a, that's a good weld, really. So uh, I pushed there, and well, you you told me to push it, right? Yeah, pushing, you get a bit more penetration going in, going on. The I mean, you got the aluminium back in there, which is going to take some of that that heat away from it. So how does pushing... Well, you're give, driving give. the arc into there, you're driving the wire into the arc. Yeah. So you generally get, get more penetration. That That's way. what I was trying to get at earlier yeah. on with yeah. the angle of the wire. That's right, yeah, the, you can push it in. Uh, if you pull it, it'd be slightly minimal. But um, it, okay. it, you've got to experiment with these things to find out. And well, it, this is something I didn't know, and I've basically pulled probably all of the welds, yeah. unless it okay. was a, a space constraint. Right. I probably pull most of my okay. welds where okay. I should really push. Well, it, it, it depends on thickness. If it's a thicker material, yeah. Uh, thin panel work, like you say, if, if you welded a whole panel like that, it will be so bowed. Mm. Uh, but that's where you need to stagger. Stagger your welds. Okay. Is there anything else there that I can learn that, to do better? Make sure your mask is set, right? Yeah, that was strange. But I think that's just the difference between the, the, the amps we were using yeah. for the, for the I, I think mil. perhaps you had on shade 9. Uh, at the higher amperage, it was yeah. perhaps a bit too low, you should have had it on to 10, perhaps you might have saw a bit better. <laughs> well, I couldn't see that. Uh, could I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't see the, yeah, the gap. I well, that, yeah. that, that's why sometimes um, we've got a dual shade uh, mask that will go right down on shade 5. Uh, you're welcome to have a go on that. Uh, I'd love to, yeah. In, in a minute. And that'll get okay. you a little bit lower. All right then. You've set up this fillet weld. You've tacked it for me. Tacked it for you. Yeah, because you've actually tacked everything, and that's really important. And I never, we never spoke about that. That you know, your workpiece, you should have it secure, tacked, maybe even clamped down to your workbench or a vice or something like that too, right? Because it's just gonna help. Yeah, it, it, it stops distortion. It keeps it in place, uh, and sometimes the, the gap will open up if you haven't got it tacked uh, effectively. Okay. And, and then and then you run into problems of putting your wire in. But uh, yeah. Sure. You're just going to let me at this again, just like Absolutely. I don't know. Yeah, just, but I think you need to cut your wire back first. Yeah, okay. So right. I'll do that for you. Okay. 
Okay, straight away, that's just wandering all over the place. Finally, a little bit of drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that felt like my welder where the wire was kind of running itself up right. and down. That's something to do with how I'm approaching it, obviously, is it? Right, possibly you need to, uh, we might need to increase the, the, the voltage a little bit on that. Um, Get this out of the way so we can see what's going on. Yeah, go on. Oh, and, and maybe slow down a little bit. So one or the other, really, I need to do on that. Is it a bit low? Yeah, a bit low right down here. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, almost there. Maybe you've gone a little bit too uh, too fast. How do you know it was too fast? I know it was too fast because I sped it up and I probably, I thought it was working. It, it, it's not quite equal on both. Um, so it does look at, I mean, drop down a bit on the bottom there. Um, that part there looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, so so, so you, you're getting there, but you've got cold lap on here. Um, so that, that would be where the... Such there it's too high, I think, is it? Yeah, a little bit too high there. And you're saying that section is, is reasonable? It's, yeah, it's reasonable. And this is too low? Too low on there. So a little bit more time spent on this, so you can perfect that. Do you see this kind of V shape here? Yeah. And it's slightly less there. Is that a sign of it being too fast? Well, this is it, it's a sign of, if you get that V shape, yes, it can be, you're going a little bit too quick. So we, we've got a couple of ways of you slowing yourself down would help. Okay. Um, or uh, possibly turn the, turn the power up a little bit more and you go a little bit quicker, but uh, <laughs> there's a couple of ways of approaching that. So will, I, will we flip this round or do we need a fresh one? We, flip, uh, we can, flip, we can flip it right. Yeah. You've changed the settings on the machine slightly, yeah. so yeah. what have you done? I, I've just turned up the voltage a little bit, a little bit more wire, so we've got a little bit more power in there and hopefully you should be able to cover it a lot better. So do I still need to slow down? Yeah, well, Give it a go and you see how you go. Need, you need to see how you go and how that arc and how that how it's all forming on behind the arc. There. I, I just want to say that the what has hit me most profoundly about everything that we've talked about so far, both on camera and off camera, is that this really is a case of it, it's a case of practicing. It's a yeah, case of yeah, trial and error. Absolutely. And and I'm watching you guys. I mean, you've got the sheet there that comes with the welder that yeah. gives you a guideline it as to well. what wire speed and what ampage or amperage will, will suit, generally suit at certain thickness yeah. of steel. Yeah. And you guys use that just the same as anybody else would use it, just to get a guide and, and you get a guide reference. and then you fine tune it to your preference or the material you're welding. And it's by trying an error sometimes, you know, you might blow a hole or you might be not tight hot enough. Uh, and you might have to grind the weld back and then and start again. But yeah, it is a guideline yeah. and it get you in a ballpark sort of figure. And look, I should also say, this is probably hot now, but Mike, all the way along, has been testing the machine, setting it up, seeing what works generally before I've been welding it. So I've been running reasonable welds, but yeah. you have been setting up the machine. But it's not like you're using any tricks. It's just a case of trial and error. Yeah, correct. Even yeah, for you. Yeah. Trial and error and, and, and seeing what you come up with on, on that. OK, well, look, we give it, give it a go. go. See what happens. First bit was <laughs> It's not even on the top piece of it. <laughs> How's the second bit look? Is it a bit too high? Because I tried to go high to see if I could get it to... It, it does look a little bit high. Uh, perhaps we do need to have more power with it. We need to go up a little bit on the voltage on that. This is sitting high, this yeah. section. That, let's not even talk about. That's where I stopped. And this this yeah, is yeah, just... Yeah. There's actually a full gap there. Yeah, yeah there is yeah. a gap there. So I was just way too low. So all in all, that was a complete failure. <laughs> What I'm actually going to do now is, I'm because I want to be able to see it better because I was leaning around yeah. there. So I'm going to do it on this side I, I without think, it being. I a, think that's wise. Yeah. yeah. Push from there. Pull it up and uh, we'll see, see how it goes. Good. Yeah. 
Now what I might do, I might adjust the machine as you as are. As I go. And you can do that on the, on the inverter machine. <laughs> so. You're just trying to inject the drama <laughs> in there that I've been looking for. Okay, yeah, you go for that. Yeah. You've got to be quick though, because it's a very short run. Yeah. Probably way too slow. Look at there that. we go. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's better. Man. Yeah, absolutely, that's better. A little bit high, perhaps, but I did turn the, the voltage up and the wire up a little bit. Okay, I'll turn this round so that everyone can see. So it is. Let me that, that, let me tilt this a Yeah, it's it's definitely better. It's, it's yeah, not too. It's not too thick. It's not too slow. No, I think that's all right. Turn it over. So have a look at the penetration on, underneath. There you go, not quite a good pen on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Okay. And it might be helped that you had a better position rather than doing Oh, that felt a lot yeah. better for, for yeah. me, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we've, um, have we exhausted MIG welding? Is there anything that you would say to somebody who mm. had always wanted to try it, weld MIG weld, but just hadn't, hadn't bitten the bullet, I mean, MIG welding is, is, is one of the easiest uh, forms of welding, absolutely. And, and the important thing is getting the right machine for you to help you mm. al along the way. Uh, and so you, you, you want a machine that performs very well. Um, but if you want a machine that's going to weld very effective for you, especially in the automotive, welding panels or chassis, anything MIG would be definitely the way to go. And using, I would prefer a uh, gas wire rather than gasless. But gas is as its place, like everything I'm, in life. I'm a convert. I'm definitely a convert. <laughs> so tell me this, though, because it really struck me that you guys run demos here. Mm. And that's not, a, it's not necessarily a paying thing. I mean, you're, you're running demos generally for people who are thinking about getting into Absolutely, the Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and some people just want to make sure they, uh, they're, they're buying a machine that will do what they want to do. Um, and sometimes they can be uh, pre-judgmental on things. They, they might might think the machine won't do what they want to do, um, but it's just coming here. This is what I do. This is what it's capable of. And, and most people buy when they when they have a demonstration, or it might lead them to purchase another machine that will do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. Amazing. Uh, Brilliant. Okay. Well, let's move on. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna take a break I think and then do some yeah. plasma stuff right? have, a, have a drink of water have a drink of water yeah you know conception of how hot it is in here I think it's 36 degrees outside right is that what they said yeah about that I think it is yeah and we've got six lights running in here okay right. brilliant could we have wrapped that any more abruptly? We were in, it's, we were literally in a, a room with a hot tin roof. We were in the top of an industrial unit in 36 degrees with all the studio lights going and the welders and all that kind of stuff. It was tough going. I really have to thank Artec Welding, the guys and girls there, because not only did they give me expert advice, supervise me and send me home with a trio of machines, they fed me too. Simple pleasures. Aaron needs a second kind of round of applause and thanks too because this video wouldn't exist if he hadn't have stuck his neck out. It is incredible when somebody just takes it upon themselves to help you out and help out something like this. Um, so we owe him a great deal of thanks and thank you. And speaking of people helping out, my new patrons, Andrew Hamilton, Chris Rogers, Dan Ron Caroni, Eduardo Kaftansky, Gary Hausman, Gert Salak, John Hales, Matt, Shepcar, Matthew Yeadon, Michael Berger, Michael Crowell, Olivier, can you still see me? I've got a hat on the camera to make sure it doesn't overheat. Olivier Hines, Roy McGavigan, Richard Halton, Sam Kirk, Jay Trainer, Stephen Littleton, and The Stig. I'm coming to fix it. The Stig, did you hear that? The Stig is now a patron too. Anyway, thank you guys. You are keeping this going. It is. A labor of love, but it's one that I do love. So, so long as it's practical and so long as you're supporting me, I will be here. The Esprit is coming next. There was no way I was touching it with one of these, but now I have both the machines and the skills, and that is gonna be the focus of the series from here in. So stay tuned, and until I see you the next time, good luck.